Thank you for tuning in to the Practical Preservation Podcast. Please take a moment to visit our website, practicalpreservationservices.com, for additional information and tips to help you restore your historical home. If you've not done so, please subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, or SoundCloud, and also like us on Facebook. Welcome to the Practical Preservation Podcast, hosted by Danielle and Jonathan Kepperling. Kepperling Preservation Services is a family-owned business based in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, dedicated to the preservation of our built architectural history for today's use as well as future generations. Our weekly podcast provides you with expert advice specific to the unique needs of renovating a historic home, educating by sharing our From the Trenches preservation knowledge and our guests' expertise, balancing modern needs while maintaining the historical significance, character, and beauty of your period home. This is the Practical Preservation Podcast, and today we have Sean Wagner with us. Uh, He's the co-founder of the Mason-Dixon Paranormal Society, and he has been involved with over 200 investigations. Thank you for joining us today, Sean. Thank you for having me. Okay. How did you become a paranormal investigator? Well, I had a prior job, and I found that a couple people went ghost hunting every once in a while. And I just thought that sounded pretty cool, be fun. And I started doing that. And lo and behold, I ended up making trips to Gettysburg uh, in the end just about every weekend. Okay, so how did you have something else? I know, I was going to say eventually we got in like helping people then. Okay, very cool. Did um, how did you how did the Mason Dixon Paranormal Society form? Well, it was formed in 2005 by Daryl Keller and Stuart Cornelius. They uh, they decided to start their own group. And they wanted to do it where they went out and set out to debunk claims, but also gather information or evidence, excuse me, as uh, as they were going along. They also used a lot of high tech equipment like um, the uh, thermal imaging. They also used digital recorders. Uh, EMF meters were being used and still used today, obviously, uh, such as the K2 and millimeters. Uh, we also have used in the past motion detectors. And does do those does that equipment help you then determine if it is something paranormal or something that is you know can be explained? Yes, yeah, it helps us to uh, uh, those that information helps us tell if something could be there, uh, or it be hiding from us, or or not. And also to gather information if it um, manifests itself and is able to communicate with us in some point. Okay, so what um, what services does the Mason Dixon Paranormal Society um, offer? Well, there aren't too many. There isn't too much in services we really offer. It's mostly uh, we take claims and then we try to debunk, find an alternative to what's going on. And if we find an alternative, it doesn't necessarily mean that's what happened. But we use uh, we use the evidence to try to tell what's going on. To try to get them the help they need, and then we would refer them to someone else, um, depending on how serious it is, which is a rare case, thank God. But we do have contacts as well in case something would be beyond uh, what we could do to help them. But we can help about 99% of the cases. Okay, and those would be to do more of like a cleansing or something along those lines? Is that is that what you mean? Yeah, okay. cleansing. One of the rare cases um, where there could be some kind of a a bad entity there. So um, I'm thinking about the typical Victorian haunted house, you know, like the the mm-hmm. outside of the Adams family, or you know, the the house above the the on the hill above the Bates Motel. Um, sure. Are are older buildings better for paranormal investigations? Yes, they are better than newer houses, but even newer houses, you can have activity, especially depending upon what happened on the grounds in the past. Uh, For example, if a house gets demolished 
because someone was killed there, for example, you build a new house right there. Um, the new people at the new house could still have activity. And that makes sense. Um, that makes sense to me that you're not changing. You're not changing the the ground that that it was built on. You're just changing the structure. Absolutely. That's why history um, plays a key role in that. And do you, is part of your investigation then researching the history of the house and things that may have happened? We try to do that at okay. least, yes. Okay. Yeah. So uh, a few years ago, I attended a ghost dinner at the Accomack Inn in Wrightsville. Uh, were you personally involved with that investigation? Yes, I was there. Okay. Okay. And were there any surprises or revelations or um, was that a successful um, investigation? I would say it was a successful investigation, although we did have a couple surprises. Um, in our research, uh, they're, they, they named their ghost Johnny. Well, actually, I shouldn't say it. That's, there is history giving him that name. Um, but anyway, they, they do paint him a little bit different uh, light than what he really is or was. Um, they, they paint him more as a lovable guy. He really wasn't that so much. And that's the, and I'm just thinking about the history that we learned that night. He's, he's, uh-huh. he shot another, another, he shot a woman that worked there. Is that correct? Is that, is that who, who you're referring to? Yes. He okay. shot Emily that yes. worked there. Yes. And uh, actually back in the day, that was the murder of the century kind of, that was like the OJ case back in the day. I can imagine. Um, he was tried, I believe in Chicago. And then sent, he went, he was executed, though, in Gettysburg, I believe. Okay. Um, he was kind of a bully. They don't really paint that picture there, which is nothing wrong with that. That's not a bad thing. Um, and being that he's dead, it's probably not a, probably a good idea because it doesn't really matter so much now. Right. Okay. Um, let me see. Does Does your typical investigation usually involve debunking a paranormal cause do you go in assuming that it's not paranormal and then try to prove that it is or how do you how do you go through that when you're investigating well we take their claims and we will try to find an alternative explanation as to what they have happening like a a regular explanation for how it could happen versus the paranormal although we are well we do that though we are still gathering evidence and trying to to see if there is paranormal activity going on though but sometimes we can debunk it with something alternative sometimes we can't sometimes the possible debunking could might not be what actually happened as well so if someone thinks that they're having paranormal activity is there are there things they can do themselves to either you know to debunk it before they contact you or should they should they contact you first? Are there steps to do? Well, that's I would say the best thing they can do is probably tell how often the activity is going on. Um, if they can debunk it, certainly go ahead and do that. Uh, probably most people wouldn't know what to look for to do that though, unfortunately. And then uh, give us a call, and uh, I'll get a rough idea on the phone, possibly what could be going on. And, of course, I'll set up for an investigation and see what can go from there. Okay. So is there a point when they should – should they gather information, try to, you know, like make a – see if there's a pattern of behavior? And then is there – are there steps that they should do before they contact you? Is there, is there a process or just call and kind of chat with you and then go from there? Pretty much just call and chat from us. But if they could take note in a in a notebook or a journal what's going on and how often it's occurring, that would also that's always a great idea. Okay. So what are the biggest concerns that a client has when they're calling you and you know, how do you get help them get over the their concerns? Well, for the most part, people think it's a lot of people think it's something really bad all the time. When for the most part, it's just a person that walked the earth like you and I. Uh, so it's not, you, it's not something bad. Uh, like I said, for 99.9% that guy. I think people are more concerned as well when it's kids. 
if they have a haunting there and uh, either the kids are involved or they have kids there, period. And uh, we try to, we, we try to um, make them feel at ease and, and tell them that there isn't really anything to worry about. And we give them an explanation as to why as well. That and that that may I, I think understanding the why is probably more important. That made me think of um, when I was little. We lived in um, mm-hmm. Colorado in a in a small town in in the foothills of the mountains. And when we moved into the house, my mom I was two when we moved in, and my mom said I was always talking about the people in my room. And she started doing research, and um, our house had been built where in an in a cemetery there had been a fat flash flood that had washed all the tombstones away, and they just built houses on top of it then. Mm-hmm. And um, so then, when when my parents were building an addition on the back of the house, right under my room, there was there was a a coffin with, and they had to call people and stop the the construction. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that made me when you said children they i don't think they were too worried about me like getting hurt or anything but my mom just listened sure. to my stories <laughs> well the good thing is there was there also was no fear no or no, nothing there to worry about no no and that's that's the good thing about um the paranormal for the most part also don't play the ouija boards for everybody out there but uh there really is isn't too much to worry about so um, what are your biggest challenges with, you know, either educating the public or getting people to to realize that they don't need to be afraid? Do you have um, certain challenges? Uh, well, the biggest challenge we probably have is uh, maybe this could help me uh, this broadcast too is we could certainly use more people to help us do investigations. Uh, a lot. Sometimes I have a lack of people to do them. Do you do them in a certain geographic area? Yes. I, we do them in South Central Pennsylvania, as well as North Central Baltimore, or Maryland, I mean. We'll go down to about Baltimore, and we've gone over to Philadelphia, um, We'll even go to Altoona. I don't know if we've been out there that I can remember anyway. And up towards State College. Uh, that would be the main area that we would cover. Uh, okay. And then um, if someone is interested in, in helping with investigations, should they should they call you? We'll get to, you know, how people can get involved with or how people can get in touch with you. But if they wanted to get involved, would it be the same way? Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Just come forward and send a private personal message in okay. um, to the. I'll probably give the group information, but uh, even post in the group. You, you wouldn't even have to send a message. Just post right to the group. When you get admitted, I wouldn't mind joining, and uh, I would see it and I'd be in touch. Okay. Are there any qualifications or anything that's required? I would say pretty much an open mind to the paranormal. That's really about it. Okay. Okay. Um, they don't have to have uh, even equipment, really. Uh, yeah, that would be about it. There wouldn't be too much. Okay. Very, very good. Um, is okay. there any, I know that you had told me that you have another um, organization. Do you want to, could you tell me a little bit about that? Yes, we do also. Uh, Mason Dixon Paranormal Society is, uh, I'm not one of the original people, so I, I stick to the original foundation for that, and that, that it was a paranormal uh, society. Uh, we also, uh, a little more than a year ago, started doing uh, some Bigfoot in- investigations. We do that under the name Central Pennsylvania Investigation Investigators, and uh, we take and uh, go out mostly to uh, the area of South Mountain, right near the Pennsylvania-Maryland border in Adams County, actually very close to the Franklin County line as well, uh, to Michoud State Forest. And uh, we take and see if we can dig up some evidence or get some howls back from uh, possibly from Bigfoot. Uh, we also try to debunk it. 
along the way. Okay. Do you use the same similar equipment or is it different equipment for, for going out to do that? Well, thank God, it's pretty much the same. Okay. Uh, we're able to pretty much use the same. That um, Because we're doing the paranormal, we're fortunate enough that we don't have to spend a lot of money on equipment to use for that as well. I have bought a small parabolic dish. Uh, and I bought some equipment to live stream. But except for that, and also record, obviously. Uh, but except for that, there's not a whole lot we had to put money out for because we were able to use the same equipment, thank God. That's that's a blessing, certainly. Yes. So have you found any evidence of, of Bigfoot in, on South Mountain? Um, back on June the 8th, we did a broadcast. Uh, and I was recently able to talk to some people from uh, one of the, the groups that's done many, many investigations for it, because I cannot say that we have. Uh, all, they're great guys, Pennsylvania Bigfoot Investigations. I ran across them recently, and I had asked them about my experience. Um, what we heard was uh, the beginning of like, oh, and then it stopped right there. Usually it goes on and on. Then we heard a trees, or the birds in the trees go crazy. This is 10 or 1030 in the evening. Oh, And yeah. then we heard an owl sound. And I asked him about that because the beginning is not the sound of an owl. So that, that sound I couldn't debunk easily at all. And, and we tried to debunk that as well. But the NB and the owl had me wondering. Um, they told me we more than likely had an experience. One got close and was like, oh, crap, there's people around. And uh, that's when we heard the owl sound then. Um, either way, it's, uh, that's the best experience I can say we've had. We didn't see anything, unfortunately. We didn't smell anything. Uh, but as close as the birds were in the tree that went crazy, uh, the creature would have had to be fairly close to us. Uh, probably within 25 yards or so. Oh, my goodness. Uh, but we're, we escaped it, obviously, unharmed, thank God. Um, I think they do exist. Uh, and it also gives us something to do with the paranormal, unfortunately, being a little bit lighter than what it used to be. We used to do, we used to do about three investigations a month. Uh, unfortunately, now we do about one a month. Okay. Well, hopefully, um, you know, as more people hear about the service you offer, you get, you know, more people calling. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there is still still activity for you to go out and investigate. That hasn't stopped. Well, there has to be. It's the great time of year, too, for it. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> so how, how can our listeners get in touch with you? All right. I would recommend um, they could either... Like the page for Mason Dixon Paranormal Society, but I also do recommend taking an, uh, and applying for the group Mason Dixon Paranormal Society. Is and, that a closed uh, Facebook group? That is a closed Facebook group, okay. yes. And then you can anyone outside can post as well there. Um, as, obviously, as long as it's paranormal, I will not block any posts. Once it's paranormal related, whether it be a conference or your own experience out there or your own story. All that stuff's perfectly fine. No football selling jerseys. No, we get banned for that Unf <laughs> for obvious reasons. Right. Uh, but also, if you're just also in the other, in uh, Bigfoot or uh, Mysterious, uh, that's Central Pennsylvania Investigations, we just have a page for that. And for both, we actually have a YouTube channel as well. And are they both, they're either the Pennsylvania, is it Pennsylvania Investigations? Is that... Uh, that's a, uh, Pennsylvania Bigfoot investigations are like friends of, of oh, mine. Oh, okay. I, I'm sorry. What I, I, I was, I was gonna, I was just gonna clarify your YouTube, um, groups. The one was the, is the Mason Dixon paranormal. And is that like its own page? And then you have another page for, for your other group. Yes. yes. Okay. Central Pennsylvania investigators. Okay. Uh, as their own. I have one channel for that and one under Mason Dixon Paranormal Society. Okay, very good. And you put up videos and things that you found um, at your in your investigations. Absolutely, there is one other channel which we have. Um, I recently did start the the Mason Dixon one, but we do have some other evidence under a channel called Daryl with two R's six five eight. We have some good evidence from prior investigations there. 
Okay, well, thank uh, you. One is a deep remote control flying through the air. Another one is, it's going to seem ironic when I say this, but like a, a, a uh, smartphone app giving relevant information that we were able, able to verify. Oh, goodness. That's, um, it sounds... Was it, uh, was it like a specific paranormal app or was it just like using the phone? It was a specific paranormal okay, app. Okay, okay. Um, we used Ghost Radar Classic. People say it's it's fooey and they I see their point and they have a point. Uh, but every once in a while, you're going to get relevant information out of it. If you just use it once, you, you probably will not get anything relevant. There's a good chance you won't. But if you keep using it repeatedly... And actually look and see if you can verify and it comes off of it. Once in a while, you could end up with something interesting. I, I didn't even know that there, there, were, there were apps for, for, for paranormal, investigating paranormal activity. <laughs> so I guess I haven't <laughs> spent enough time in the app store. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, is there anything else you'd like to share with us today? Uh Nothing I can think of except for thank you for uh, allowing me to do this. And uh, I appreciate that a lot. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for listening to the Practical Preservation Podcast. The resources discussed during this episode are on our website at practicalpreservationservices.com forward slash podcast. If you received value from this episode and know someone else that will get value from it as well, please share it with them. Join us next week for another episode of the Practical Preservation Podcast. For more information on restoring your historic home, visit practicalpreservationservices.com.